Well, first, there was Fire and Fury, Michael Wolff's best-selling, worldwide best-selling book detailing White House chaos, which led to Robert Mueller interviewing the book's main source, Steve Bannon. Then Christopher Whipple's update to his book, The Gatekeepers, focused on former Chief of Staff Ryan Priebus and revealed how Priebus reportedly reversed the president's order firing Attorney General Jeff Sessions, an important revelation to a possible obstruction of justice case against Donald Trump. Surely that book was of interest to the special prosecutor. And today, Robert Mueller has a new must-read book. David Korn and Michael Isakoff's Russian Roulette, they released the first excerpt from their upcoming book, which sheds new light on Donald Trump's ties to Russia, particularly the time period around 2013 and the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow. You got the uh, the uh, Miss Universe pageant. You're going to hold right. that in in uh, Russia. That's in November uh, to 9th. Co coincide with the uh, upcoming Olympics in in Russia. Right, exactly. And have you had any dealings with the Russians? Well, I've done a lot of business with the Russians. Vladimir Putin. Have you ever met He's the guy? A tough guy. I met him once. Yes, that was the longest necktie in the history of the David Letterman show. According to Korn and Isakov, in Russian roulette, they could find no evidence that Donald Trump met. Vladimir Putin. But there is plenty of evidence that Donald Trump was eager to meet Vladimir Putin four months before telling David Letterman that he met Vladimir Putin once. Donald Trump tweeted, do you think Putin will be going to the Miss Universe pageant in November in Moscow? If so, will he become my new best friend? My new best friend. That was Donald Trump's ambition for Vladimir Putin. That's how what he wanted Vladimir Putin to become in his life, his new best friend. According to Russian Roulette, Trump had for years longed to develop a glittering Trump Tower in Moscow. Trump realized he could attain none of his dreams in Moscow without forging a bond with the former KGB lieutenant colonel who was the president of Russia. Vladimir Putin did not attend the Trump Miss Universe pageant in Moscow. But shortly after Donald Trump returned from Moscow, a billionaire Russian real estate developer's daughter, quote, showed up at the Miss Universe office in New York City bearing a gift for Trump from Putin. It was a black lacquered box. Inside was a sealed letter from the Russian autocrat. What the letter said has never been revealed. If Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller didn't know about that letter before reading about it today in that excerpt of the new book, Russian Roulette, the Special Prosecutor will surely want to get his hands on that letter now. The book reveals a meeting in Trump Tower in January 2015 that was a precursor to the meeting in Trump Tower with a group of Russians during the presidential campaign. In January 2015, nearly a year after Putin's invasion in Ukraine, Trump had Emin Agalarov and Rob Goldstone as guests to his office, his office in Trump Tower, a meeting that was never publicly revealed during the investigations that followed the 2016 election. While they chatted, Trump was encouraging Emin, who had performed at the Miss Universe contest in 2013, maybe next time you'll be performing at the White House. 17 months later, in June 2016, Goldstone would return to Trump Tower, this time escorting a Russian-led delegation dispatched by the Aguilerovs, offering potentially derogatory information on Hillary Clinton, courtesy of the Kremlin, to the top officials of Trump's presidential campaign. Donald Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was in that meeting in, in Trump Tower, hoping to get dirt on Hillary Clinton. And today, Paul Manafort picked up a second ankle bracelet. He pleaded not guilty in a Virginia federal court to charges of tax fraud, bank fraud and conspiracy. That is a separate case to the one Paul Manafort has already pleaded not guilty in. And so the second not guilty plea earned him a second ankle bracelet today. Prosecutor Andrew Weissman, who is the tax expert on the special prosecutor's team, said in court today that the prosecution is ready to go to trial soon, adding this about the Manafort tax fraud case. Quote, I don't think it's complicated. Manafort's defense lawyer countered with, I think it is complicated. 
He asked that the trial be delayed until at least November. The judge set a trial date of July 10th. A Washington, D.C. court had already set a trial date of September 17th for the first set of indictments returned against Paul Manafort. Joining us now, Kurt Anderson, host of the public radio program Studio 360 and the author of the book Fantasyland, How America Went Haywire. Also with us, Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning opinion writer for The Washington Post and an MSNBC political analyst. And David K. Johnson, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who founded DCReport.org. He's the author of the book, It's Even Worse Than You Think, What the Trump Administration is Doing to America. And David, I want to start with you as a student of Trump businesses. Uh, what we learned today in the Russian roulette uh, excerpt is, uh, I think, as, as clear an explanation of Trump's attitude toward Russian, Russian sanctions as we've seen yet, and uh, because those sanctions come while he was in the middle of trying to set up this deal for a Trump Tower in Moscow. When that collapsed because of the sanctions, uh, Rob Goldstone is, is quoted in the book saying, uh, Rob Goldstone suspected the demise of Trump's project with the Aguileros influenced Trump's view of sanctions. They had interrupted a business deal that Trump was keenly interested in. Uh, David, that seems like a pretty simple explanation of the Trump attitude toward sanctions. And, and I think it's a very logical and sensible explanation. It helps us also understand some of the antipathy that Donald Trump has for the Obama administration, because if he thought he was about to get this deal uh, that he had longed for and lusted for for so long and it comes apart, that's going to upset him. And I have to tell you, the excerpt is, uh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, if we were gold miners, we've suddenly noticed there's a whole new vein off in another direction that we need to start uh, digging through because there's a lot more gold here to be mined. Uh, and Gene, uh, there are details about setting up uh, the Miss Universe uh, pageant in Moscow and what's involved in that. There's one mm -hmm. uh, quote here saying we all and this is someone from the uh, pageant saying we all knew that the event was approved by Putin. A Miss Universe official later said you can't pull off something like this in Russia unless Putin says it's OK. Trump would only be making money in Russia because Putin was permitting him to do so. Uh, and Gene, uh, there we see uh, where Donald Trump's first real engagement with Putin world occurred. Yeah, we, we do. I mean, I think uh, my understanding of, of the way Russia works, that's certainly true. Uh, you, you don't make that kind of money and put on that sort of event in, in Moscow without uh, his permission and, and his support. Uh, but the letter in the black lacquered box, that's what I want to see. My goodness. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, a, that's amazing. Uh, you know, maybe it was just, um, you know, sorry, I missed you in Moscow. Um, you know, we'll run into each other some other time. Or maybe it was something more substantive than that. Um, uh, but uh, I, I certainly want to see that letter. I guess Robert Mueller does, too. Yes. And uh, there's real detail in here about what the financing was going to be for this office build, this Trump Tower uh, in Moscow. Uh, and the, the book excerpt says this about it. It says the state owned uh, Spurbank announced it had struck a strategic cooperation agreement with the Crocus Group to finance about 70 percent of a project that would include a tower bearing the Trump name. If the deal went ahead, Trump would officially be doing business in Moscow with the Russian government. A letter of intent to build the new Trump Tower was signed by the Trump Organization and Egerlarov's company. Donald Trump Jr. was placed in charge of the project. And Kurt Anderson, it was those Obama sanctions that ended it all. Well, it was the Obama sanctions, uh, of course, coming after both the uh, uh, incursion and takeover of Crimea, as well as the incursion into Ukraine simultaneously, three months after the uh, Miss Universe pageant in Moscow, where Donald Trump uh, was and was desperate, according to this book, to meet uh, Vladimir Putin, which didn't happen then. But so uh, one can see in terms of just that quick uh, adjacency of the Miss Universe pageant, his hopes high, and then it all falling apart because his his would-be pal Putin um, uh, invaded both uh, Crimea and, and Ukraine. Um, the other thing about this book that I find, uh, the excerpt from the book that I find so interesting is the Rob Goldstone bit, who was there in Las Vegas making the deal for the, for the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow uh, uh, five months before the Miss Universe pageant. 
And then, of course, he's there again uh, in 2015, and of course, then again at the famous June 2016 meeting. Rob Goldstein has seemed like a kind of comic uh, secondary character, but I am more interested than ever in him. And of course, he's already testified apparently to the to the Senate Intelligence Committee and has reportedly uh, expressed a willingness to talk to Mueller. Uh, I'll be interested to see how he figures. I, I, I have a hunch that he may be more than simply this funny uh, uh, comic relief character in this whole story. Yeah, uh, David, I share uh, Kurt's view of Goldstone as he emerges in this book, and he, he seems to be a cooperative source uh, for this book. Uh, but he is in the room in some of the key moments. Well, and the comfort and familiarity that the Trumps have with Goldstone, as we saw in the emails from um, June of 2016, suggests that there's a lot more connection here than we're aware of. Yeah, and, and Gene, uh, of course, Donald Trump, uh, his involvement in a beauty pageant has many dimensions. It's not just about making money. Uh, he also uh, involved himself in personally picking the winners. I want to read mm -hmm. this passage of it. Uh, this, is, uh, this was Trump's chance to review the contestants and exercise an option he always retained under the rules of his pageants to overrule the selection of judges and pick the contestants he wanted among the finalists. In short, no woman was a finalist until Trump said so. If there were too many women of color, he would make changes, a, a Miss Universe staffer uh, later noted. If he didn't like a woman because she looked too ethnic, you could sometimes persuade him by telling him she was a princess and married to a football player, a staffer later explained. Uh, such is the uh, view of beauty through Donald Trump's yeah. eyes, Gene. You know, why am I not surprised by that, Laura? It's just kind of the, the, the way you would imagine Donald Trump would, would comport himself running a beauty pageant. And, uh, and speaking of Donald Trump comporting himself, um, you know, there's also the question of, of uh, what extracurricular activities he got up to in, uh, in, uh, in his time in Moscow and um, you know maybe uh, maybe there are characters in the story who can throw more light on that that hasn't already been covered by the by the dossier so um, let's ask Mr. Goldstone and others about that as well yeah and, and Kurt uh, Keith Schiller's story is in this book in that night in Moscow where he says he stood outside the door of the hotel room for a while uh, to make sure that no one went in there. But then at a certain point, he left. And he can't say uh, what happened in that hotel room for the entire night. Well, and again, the, it's interesting, isn't it, this, this, this weekend of the Miss USA patch in Las Vegas where this deal was uh, uh, signed and, and settled with, with Goldstone, with the Aguilera, Mr. Aguilera. It was just uh, the Tuesday following that weekend where... Donald Trump does what is, to me, his famous tweet saying, well, will Vladimir Putin become my be new best friend, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show, when I go to Moscow? So the, the, the adjacency of this is one more instance of you can't make it up. It's, it, it's so beyond any fictional version of, of reality. But it, it, as, as we find with Donald Trump, with <laughs> revelation after revelation, it is, it is, uh, it's extraordinary. I, I, I mean, the, if he were looking not to leave a trail of suspicious activity, um, uh, this is the opposite of, of that uh, procedure. Kurt Anderson.